Since you guys really liked the previous video that I did on the Accelerated Dragon, here we go again. Here's a preview of the key ideas that we'll be learning today as I walk you through four model games that I have played on my speedrun account. Plenty of chess to learn, so let's dive right in. Alright boys and girls, back with another Sicilian. Trying to get an accelerated dragon. It's like uh, almost uh, finding uh, <laughs> a wild panda. It's not very simple. Okay, open Sicilian. Gonna be taking. Uh, we have uh, the horse capturing. Gonna complete the fianchero and knight c6 is pretty much coming on the next, no matter what. Uh, pressuring the knight. So many moves possible, he decides to make the capture, which I think it's already a bit uh, inferior for white, because it's improving our pawn structure. Also on it 6 it's, um, okay, recommended for white to play bishop e3, and then uh, we can just go knight f6 castle with uh, d5 ideas. Uh, Alright. Bishop g5. So the problem with bishop g5 is that uh, it's not really papering castles. So castling long would be very dangerous considering uh, we have uh, direct contact uh, with the b-file. And yeah, normally castle short should be safer. And bishop g5 is not prioritizing that, but also creating a weakness. So. That's why uh, we can actually start with uh, rook b8 and rook b1 already, I think, uh, would be winning for black. Not easy at all to defend this pawn. Maybe best move now, bishop c1. Kind of ironic. I don't think he'll play it though. b3 just loses the house. Knight would be undefended. And okay, time for you to pause the video. And already move 8. We can... Uh, get the crashing position after the important uh, rook takes b2. Capturing the pawn, the knight remains undefended. Pretty sure um, queen a5 was not bad at all, but bishop d2 was sort of keeping things together for a little bit. So um, yeah, rook b2, winning a pawn, he cannot capture. That would uh, even lose a piece. So... Not easy, probably still best bishop d2, but uh, yeah, white is already uh, on the back foot. Yeah, bishop d2, can probably trade rooks, can also do maybe queen b6. Thinking to keep it simple maybe, trade rooks, knight f6, castle. But okay, my opponent uh, chose death, so... Pause the video again and uh, find one of the sequences that uh, it's forcing him to resign on move 9. 9! Yes, a German 9. So, <laughs> the check is one of them. Also, rook b1 followed by check wins. Which one do I go for? I guess I start with the check. For no particular reason. <laughs> Just at this point, uh, both were equally winning. Jeez. <laughs> when is the last time you had such a winning position in nine moves with black? I don't know. I cannot recall. Cannot recall how it happened. Or when. Uh, C3. So he's trying to keep the knight defended. My rook, uh, yeah. Rook is arm pre, so gotta take care of that issue first, and then, uh, okay, we have pleasant choice. Which piece uh, do we take? It's tricky here to play just because of how many winning options we already have. So, that is the risk uh, that you're sometimes running while playing the uh, Accelerated Dragon. Too many winning moves. Hard to choose only one. Okay. Jokes aside, we need to watch out for that. But on queen b8, there will be king d8 simple move to defend. So 
Oh, will it be? So let's actually not um, mess around. Yeah, no, this is fine. So on queen b8, only try for white. There is check for sinking uh, to block the bishop. And then, uh, yeah, we have this only move to defend uh, our bad boy. But uh, it should be good enough. So this would be tempting, winning, winning another horse. But we would be getting uh, back rank checkmated. So, uh, yeah, unless you're into that, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't do that. So king d8, making a bit of an ugly move, but uh, forcing him to resign pretty soon. The only thing that I need to stay away from is some crazy king f3, bishop a6 scenario. But yeah, king f3, I was thinking, uh, okay, we have another good move that actually is solving all those issues and counterplay. And uh, additionally, could win even more material. So pause the video again. Move 14, the third exercise already. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, the rest is going to be actually uh, over. So king f3, notice the undefended knight. Look for that. Connect the dots. Bang. We have this little triangle motif. So, picking up the knight uh, on the next move. And more importantly, also, bishop a6 is no longer a threat because the queen covers that. So, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this really played out uh, pretty much perfectly for us. We couldn't really have asked for like a better scenario. Um, everything was um, nicely mixing uh, together. And bishop d3. Can we get uh, one last combo to make this one of the most satisfying uh, games ever? So, what really comes to mind here is the position of king and queen. So somehow a check on e5 would be nice. But also the undefended uh, bishop comes to mind. I don't really see how to attack his bishop. Now, additionally, something that uh, you should always uh, look for when you're having such a winning position is a queen trade. So probably the easiest thing uh, that we can go for is queen a5. So not only threatening the fork, but also threatening queen c7. With a queen trade. So queen a5 probably the um, easiest move. Developing the knight. It's fine but a bit uh, lacking uh, concrete idea. So in this kind of position uh, you can actually play more concrete uh, when uh, yeah he still has potential um, Flats with his queen on b8, you want to get rid of the danger ASAP and only then uh, finish development. Notice that uh, we're a bit behind in development simply because uh, we have more pieces to develop. So uh, that's normally not such a bad disadvantage, so to speak. And <laughs> that would be a final uh, touch. And okay, so he runs away. Runs away. Uh, okay. Can I actually use this queen g5 uh, motif? King f3. We can uh, hunt him down after. I don't see immediate mate after king f3, so probably good timing now to develop the horsey. Actually, threatening mate with checks, I think. Not afraid of queen f7. For that very reason. Probably f4 needs to be uh, the move for white to stop um, my attack. But uh, I'm pretty sure uh, now we have a uh, forced mate. So here has to go to f3. h3 is just mate in one. Yeah, king e3 only move. Now you'll have a good move that uh, you can try to find by pausing the video. 
until uh, yeah you post the video and I have to calculate the rest <laughs> that's usually how it goes okay this actually may be even more beautiful although yeah so the thing is bishop h6 is super tempting and then king d4 Okay, I mean, should be some forced mate, right? <laughs> uh, it's just I don't, uh, I don't really see it. But I'm sure there should be, like just d6. <laughs> I was also additionally thinking knight d5, and if he takes, there would have been uh, bishop h6 idea. But no, we just need to play simple chess here. No need to actually throw the game. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unnecessary in this position. So only move king d4 and then I think, yeah, in order to, uh, yeah, cut his escape, which is king c4, we play d6. So both cutting these squares and also making this move uh, not possible due to the fork. So d6, it's simple move in uh, somewhat complicated position. Uh, so this can be, uh, let's say, easy to miss because you normally tend to look for the checks in such scenarios, but yeah, d6, I think. Uh, it's actually the cherry on top of the cake. Now you play d6 and you can almost uh, feel uh, the smell of fresh coffee beans. Now d6 is on the board. And the rest is, yeah, gonna be c5, either checkmate, win the queen, we can... Uh, yeah, safely go for another coffee here with that. So I have this, win the queen by force. Also I have bishop e6, but then he checks me, so... Keep it simple. Mm. King c4 only move, and then you have uh, forced mate in 10 moves. So yet again, feel free to pause the video and uh, find uh, the best move after king c4. Because I'm telling you, it's not the obvious one. Bishop e6, okay, wins, but it's not so uh, straightforward. This is even stronger. And uh, queen b5 only move? And sure, we can take that. But <laughs> even better, you know, you see a free queen, look for better, so. That's a checkmate in the middle of the board right there. Booyah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see what chess.com thinks about this uh, game. Okay. All right. I mean, not too bad at the end of the day, isn't it? 99.6. I think that would be pretty solid. And yeah, remember these key ideas? Notice this uh, typical pattern uh, with the bishop on g7 uh, in open Sicilian. You feel like b2 square is loose. Then uh, you have this uh, simple uh, rook b8 and it's just very difficult for him to defend. So, um, yeah, really, I don't think there is much more to say about this game and we can just move on to the following one. All right, everybody. E4 game. Gonna be going for the Sicilian accelerated dragon, if allowed. If not, okay, some bishop c4, early uh, shenanigans, gonna complete the fee and ghetto, and uh, knight c3. So basically, this, this uh, is giving me the option of stopping white from pushing d4 in the near future, and we're gonna have uh, likely a d3 structure, which is. Uh, completely harmless so uh yeah okay how to punish this opponent just played a3 which is a normal move getting ready to meet knight a5 with bishop a2 and keeping the bishop so uh yeah i think you have uh, many setups knight f6 castle with d6 is reasonable but the problem for white is that he is showing his hand a little bit too early by going for this bishop to c4. 
without seeing uh, the placement of my pieces because I can still go for the option of uh, playing knight e7 and then a quick d5. So I think that would be the optimal way of uh, punishing this uh, yeah, simple stuff. Uh, by the way, opponent uh, 1600 from uh, Denmark. Okay. Not super scary team in chess, but still would be crashing uh, Romania in a football match. I mean, who wouldn't? So, bishop g5, gonna do h6. Just uh, see what he wants to do with the bishop. Bishop g5 was actually quite clever for him because this pin is uh, quite a clear uh, signal that he's understanding uh, my plan. So, it's a fight about the d5 square. However, the problem for my opponent is uh, I can easily win this fight by going g5 next if I want to. So it's a committal move. Potentially, it's gonna mm, give us a hard time with short castle because, you know, the king could be a bit vulnerable when you push g5. But I think we should go for it. Simply because our next moves are gonna be so much easier. I'm actually wondering, can we just do d5 right away? Am I completely crazy for thinking uh, to go d5 right away? Let's calculate a little bit. So you see that, uh, okay, I'm looking for simple line, g5, d5. But then also you want to double check whether the ideal move works. So that's how a strong player would approach the situation, would still uh, kind of insist with uh, the main plan. So d5, ed, ed. 95 and then g5 is the trick and i think we're winning a piece the main idea being uh okay bishop g3 95 simply wins a piece and knight takes on e7 queen takes on e7 check and then we pick up the h4 bishop so because of that idea i think uh we actually don't even have to commit uh we may have to later but it's kind of a nice uh, way to get started then 95 and the calculation worked. Bang! G5. Surprise, surprise. 97, but yeah, that's the catch. Opponent forgot uh, it actually happens uh, with an intermediate uh, move. Intermezzo. Check on E7. All right. Wait, <laughs> but King D2, <laughs> who calculated uh, everything in advance. So if I take, he wants Rook E1, saying that my King is still caught in the middle. And uh, you guys should be ready to call an ambulance. But for my opponent, because I'm about to block that file forever. Bishop E6, you ain't going that way, my friend. Bishop e6, <laughs> pretty much uh, pulling the uno card. Is that a thing to say? Do you guys have a social life? I don't know, risky of me to assume. So I'm just going to play bishop e6, blocking the file. Uh, he does go c3, trying to stop my threat of going bishop takes on b2. But now I think we can simply go for long castle. And uh, well... Somebody's about to get mated. Okay, just gonna recapture. Simple move. King c2 expecting. Uh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Queen b3 instead. Basically just uh, attacking the pawn. So, he's attacking this. A uh, simple defensive move would be rook uh, e8. But in chess, you should try to always do uh, two things uh, at once. Like when you used to go to school as a kid and, uh, okay, you listen a little bit uh, to the teacher and then, okay, you play uh, something on your phone uh, in the same time. So multitasking, like preparing while also preparing to double up rooks on the uh, backward pawn. So rook d6 is way more efficient. Okay, doubling up, has to defend, and then, uh, well, I'm just going to keep piling up pressure on that weak pawn. Chess is pretty simple. So, queen d7, I just want to take that if possible. Now, my opponent will try to defend with rook e3. 
And then, uh, yeah, because uh, I am up a piece, and generally when you're up a piece, the position is completely winning. You want to check out for uh, some strange moves uh, a little bit as well. Like, for instance, uh, rook e3, I would have uh, gone for the concrete knight a5. Noticing the uh, position of his queen, he doesn't have that many squares. Actually, there he would have only had queen a2. And then, uh, yeah, maybe I can give uh, some queen a4 check already. His king is uh, pretty vulnerable. Has to play king c1, defending the rook on d1. But then I have knight b3 check, potentially c4 after. Uh, yeah, that definitely should have been pretty good for us. Queen c4 instead, though, it's better for him than uh, rook e3. Because now on knight a5, at least he has queen to... Queen takes on c5 with a check of Reno. Can I just uh, defend though? Play simple move and say uh, we may go knight a5 uh, on the next one. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty fair. Gonna be going for it. Mm, yeah, really looking forward to get something going on. He's unable to pick up that pawn just because the queen uh, has to babysit the d3. Uh, uh, backward pawn so it's a backward pawn because whenever he wants to push d4 we can take and we're gonna be winning a pawn and it's not uh, protected by any other white pawns and no it can never be so yeah rookie three happens uh, a little bit later than uh, i called it but now we have to double check the calculation because knight a5 additionally he's not only gonna go queen a2 but can also Keep the queen on the 4th rank, which stops my queen a4 check. But I'm wondering, knight, queen, pawn. So, he cannot take my pawn because the rook on d1 hangs. He has to go d4. I can go queen check. He has to go king uh, d2 pretty much. Otherwise, he's in trouble. Uh, okay. I'm trying to calculate, but... Calculation uh, <laughs> really sucks. <laughs> I can go queen b3 there, no? Yeah, okay, this has to be good. So, maybe there was also some b5 move to be considered, but yeah, knight a5 and this simple stuff, c4, and the queen uh, is infiltrating uh, for the pawns. It's actually pretty logical. So queen is gonna go there on king d2. And uh, if he goes for king c1, I'll have knight b3 check. So I assume that should be completely winning for us. He has to try to run, in my opinion. Knight b3, he's gonna be kind of stuck in the mating net. So he has to go there and I try to calculate knight b3 check and then king e1. Okay, king d2, maybe also some e5 could be considered. But uh, still, king d2, probably queen b3, yeah, and he doesn't have a safe way of protecting, like rook b1, but we should have something pretty good there. I have a feeling. But anyways, he went uh, king c1, so I'm gonna go for this, king b1, and I assumed uh, there should be some move like this. He's gonna go rook takes, bishop takes, but that's fair. I think. Uh, what to do? All right. Oh, I completely blundered that uh, rook was undefended. I was uh, going to have an extra exchange in the upcoming position. But yeah, now I just have the full rook. It's just a matter of uh, yeah, keeping things together, exchanging queens. Gonna go for the trades. He should try to keep queens on the board somehow. Not that it would uh, really change the outcome of the game, but... Yeah. Okay, so queen there. I just need to make some quick moves. Happy if he goes for the trade. So... Yeah. And rook c3. Now I think some king ba, just to make sure there is nothing going on uh, on that file. Oh, I missed a gorgeous combination. Hopefully we can uh, deliver it on the next move, but 
I had such a nice winning blow. You guys uh, can pause the video and try to find what it was. But yeah, now we actually get to play it. It's such a nice uh, counter-attacking idea because King is in a mating net. So the rooks are actually <laughs> going to be able to deliver checkmate with, yeah, uh, very beautiful yet equally unnecessary combination. So um, that's uh, why you guys are tuning in. Opponent resigns just because rook to d2 next would have been made no matter where the king would have gone. Right. Not too bad. Not too bad of a game. All right, everybody. So for the next game, I'm just going to be quickly showing you the opening moves because, uh, yeah, my Norwegian opponent was uh, very slow. I guess they have plenty of salmon over there, but uh, not much internet. So he opened up with the most annoying uh, anti-Sicilian ever by playing the Alapin, where whenever you see the pawn move to c3, I recommend you push d5 uh, because your queen uh, will be safe since they are unable to get a tempo by attacking it. Go d4 and now uh, we fianchero because we are uh, dragon players, so we love to fianchero. Knight f3 and only after uh, we finish fianchetto, then we take. My opponent uh, flattened the fork which is uh, one of the most annoying Alapin ideas. And uh, as a rule of thumb, we defend with the knight. He took, I play knight f6, and then uh, he went uh, for the bishop check. So I will uh, leave you with the game. Okay, two minutes spent uh, nicely because he played the best move. Ah, and now he just plays uh, instantly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, getting myself castled. So, notice that by move 11, we have already developed all the pieces. Rooks are connected. What to do next? This would be a good time to pause the video and think about uh, how would you proceed. Because uh, you need to do a scan of the position. And, okay, in general, like, first of all, you just see whether there is any immediate win. Okay, nothing <laughs> like this is possibly uh, a thing, generally against the Alapin, since it's very solid. Then, uh, okay, you need to ask yourself, uh, how can I improve my position? Ideally, you want to have um, also a pawn break in mind. But already, the situation is quite open. So we can still uh, improve our pieces. We have obvious moves to make. Like for instance, the knight is, uh, I think, simply going to go to c5. This is the worst play placed piece at the moment. So I think I can start with it. And then we need to bring the rooks onto the open files. And once we do this, uh, we look for pawn breaks. So probably... Yeah, we can either go knight d5 and then attack these bishops some sort of e5 at some point. But yeah, normally it's going to be a matter of uh, trying to pressure him on the uh, on the queen side. The game should uh, yeah be equal, but in an ideal scenario, we manage to win uh, a pawn on the queen side and... We'll have to grind him down with uh, a 4 against 3 on this side. So yeah, queen c2. I started rook fd8 because this is full open file. Rook ac8 is only semi-open file as my opponent has a pawn on it. Rook e1. Yeah, okay. Looking for improvements. Knight d5. Feels like an improvement. Yeah, activating this uh, knight with tempo. Also, I'm watching out uh, and I'm being aware of 95 idea. Doesn't seem to really be problematic. For the time being, though, we can at the very least play queen d5 if that happened. Although, yeah, if I start b5, 95, it can be a bit annoying. Queen d5, you want to calculate uh, knight x b5. Not immediately obvious what to do. But I think we may have a winning move in that situation. So I'm going to stick with b5. Uh, and yeah, definitely you should pause the video and try to find that winning move. 
because uh, knight e5, queen d5, knight b5, I think we had a clever double attack. Knight e6, targeting the bishop while targeting the b5 knight also via the discovery. So that would have been uh, winning a piece. Rook ad1, my opponent still plays logical. Now, as a rule of thumb, whenever opponent places queen, uh, I mean rook behind your queen, you want to move. e8, not good. Basically, we want to move the queen so that we keep this e7 pawn defended. e8, I don't want, just because we'll still be pinned. So the really only other alternative is queen to b7, keeping both pawns uh, defended. That's quite uh, critical. So yeah, still, it's like move 16. And everything that we did was just following simple basic rules without having much of an alternative. Okay, b5 was kind of the only creative move so to say but <laughs> okay this isn't uh big creativity here so it can get better that's why you should keep watching okay queen e2 so he just targets uh, these pawns okay good move i'm gonna try to defend against this threat by making a counter threat since otherwise yeah it's impossible to save the pawn so knight e5 attacks the enemy bishop while also defending e7. And on the next move, I could consider simply defending or pushing. Pushing feels a little premature because I'm not sure what the follow-up on c4 can really be. And bishop g5, yeah, a6, just staying solid, not being afraid of uh, bishop takes in that position due to rook e8. And uh, his bishop would be deadly pinned to the queen. I think we're just winning a piece in that scenario. So, yeah. Please. Simple bishop move back. Okay. My pawn is hanging. I'll just defend. See what he does. Expecting some knight e5. Not really much to play for. As white. Okay, or bishop e5 trying to exchange. Yeah, that also makes sense. However, this gives me a pretty interesting opportunity that uh, was not really a thing before. So you can pause the video and, uh, yeah, try to think about uh, how would you proceed. Because in the past, I was considering a move like f6, trying to go e5, basically, why this is logical? We're getting rid of his most active piece. He really cannot be that optimistic about his position, only about the d4 knight. But if I ever tried uh, to do like f6, I was weakening square on e6, he could have played uh, knight in there, my bishop remains passive. So yeah. For that reason we start f6 now, because um, he's forced to go back and then we get e5 with tempo. And he no longer has knight e6, because we can take. And he has to go back and even though it may look like my bishop is a little bit restricted by this, what about his bishop? Well, also, this bishop wasn't really all that active. And our bishop can always still be improved. It has a much easier time to get back into the game than my opponent's bishop. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And okay, now we're uh, solidly better. We need to look for targets. Now after knight c2, the b2 pawn is undefended and we can attack it with knight a4. So, yeah, probably that's going to be a good move. Notice that uh, something is weak only if you can attack it. That's the golden rule in chess. And okay, after knight e3, I already have interesting choice. First of all, I could think of sacrificing. Second of all, if I take, he has to create an uh, isolated pawn for himself because uh, the queen has to guard the b2 pawn. Uh, yeah, those would be the main ideas. So I can take and then maybe continue with queen e4, just centralizing my queen and he doesn't have such an easy way to get rid of it because 
A move like knight e2 allows queen c2 to further infiltrating, so... Just gonna go with simple chess, I don't wanna sack yet. He wants e4 and bishop f2 to bring this bishop uh, back into reality, but I'm not gonna give him that idea. And notice that he cannot even uh, trade to make his life easier. Because, uh, yeah, the exchange of rooks followed by rook d1, I could have actually taken and either collected one of the pawns in knight d2, yeah, queen c2, I thought it's the last nail in the coffin, and his queen side is collapsing, so, yeah, just uh, knight b3, I can take on b2, I can also take there, yeah, I think simply taking the pawn, probably what the doctor ordered, And okay, he tries to keep queens on the board. I just need to watch out for some nonsense uh, activity. I'm gonna pick up this pawn, just destabilizing the knight. Knight goes on d2, destabilizing <laughs> the whole position because it's a free piece, but the game was kind of over, anyways. Okay, I need to keep my calm. Rook g2 is not a move because the queen still defends it, and uh, I'm just uh, getting my rooks protecting each other. He attacks my queen. I'm going to offer a queen trade because that's what we do. Not only that I'm offer, I'm forcing the queen trade thanks to the mating idea, and then I would have had the easy conversion in the end game. So this felt pretty accurate, and uh, get a 95. Right, everybody, so uh, in the last game of the video, we're going to be dealing with the trickiest variation possible, the Marozzi. The idea with the Marozzi is that instead of knight c3, what we've seen in the first game, white plays c4, uh, making uh, our pawn break uh, pretty much impossible and leading to a bit of a slower game. I recommend you go uh, knight c6, pressuring the knight, and then uh, instead of the normal stuff, I recommend you go for this uh, Tricky queen b6. So uh, in uh, the game, my opponent played uh, knight b5, which is the most ambitious move. I checked. He blocked with the other knight, and uh, after knight f6, threatening to win the pawn, uh, he unpinned. So I'll just uh, let you with uh, that game. Okay, queen d2. It's actually nothing wrong with it, but I could be potentially a little bit annoying with knight g4. I remember having that in my notes, but yeah, I think I'm probably just going to go a6, getting rid of this knight, and then knight d4 is going to be played, and then d6, something along those lines, and uh, we just get a uh, typical Marozzi. So I'm going to go uh, d6 and castle, knight d4, bishop e6, I'm probably going to play something like that. Yeah, bishop e2. Okay, so he's delaying f3 move, which is interesting because uh, it means he could potentially try to play with f4 in the future. I don't know. And there are basically two plans. Um, knight d4, bishop e6, probably the fastest. Other one being uh, knight d4 with bishop d7. But I think uh, he has f4 and bishop c6. Maybe he's in time with bishop f3 or something. That could be potentially scary. So I'm just gonna go for my initial idea. And then the point is uh, to just bring uh, rook f to c8. Attacking this pawn. Yeah, so f4. Threatening maybe something like that, but... Wait. Yeah, okay, chatters. <laughs> Actually, I meant to say viewers. Your boy messed up. Pause the video and find uh, the move that I missed that could have uh, already uh, brought us a quick win. Because, uh, yeah, I'm going to be relieving, uh, revealing the <laughs> situation and relieving myself because there is knight e4. Knight e4 and then queen d2. And then knight takes, but the bishop remains undefended. And we win upon. Luckily, the same tactic is available here. So, yeah, I was just... Um, Focus too much uh, on the upcoming plans that I forgot uh, in the moment the tactic could appear right away. Uh, and uh, also another reason why uh, he's supposed to defend that uh, with f3. 
So now we just take the queens and, uh, okay, after f4, this is even nicer because could potentially be picking up the second pawn. I mean, rook b1, bishop c3, knight e4, maybe bishop g7, rook b7. Yeah, not sure I'm interested in all that jazz. Maybe just some rook a c8. I don't think we really need this rook anymore. Do we want to still break with b5? Actually, maybe we do. Assuming he plays like rook a b1, b5 is potentially very nice. Yeah, and then, uh, well, we're going to get a lot of pressure over there. Yeah, simply a, b. I think I'm going to go. Idea to also play rook c2, but simply rook fd1, so I don't see a follow-up. Could also throw in this move and then a, b. Yeah, so AB, he maybe slows uh, slows us down a little bit with A3. So I think intermediate move is even better. Yeah, and then AB opens up uh, Rook's path towards the bishop. And then we just have very easy conversion. Wow. Okay. Who said Morozzi was uh, painful to deal with? Of course, it's not painful when you're facing a Norwegian player. That is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> playing blitz just while uh, snowboarding of course it ain't that difficult but uh, those are just little details okay look back to extra pawns let's not mess up the conversion so my bishops are a little bit weirdly placed especially i feel like this bishop is unprotected so you want to get yourself into a habit that you don't have undefended pieces so bishop on a2 is also weird but it's like Defended by the rook. So I want to move this guy. And probably not on f6 because of knight e4. So just all the way to g7. And then, yeah, I could improve the positioning of this bishop. If he moves his knight, uh, we'll have a nice move to uh, speed up the conversion. Even on knight e4. Oh, he goes f5. Yeah, I, I was about to say that uh, that would have allowed bishop trade. So the more pieces we can trade, uh, the easier the conversion will be. Generally. Yeah, I'm just going to centralize uh, this bishop now. If knight f3. I'm not super sure I want to take because that would uh, take the game into uh, a situation with opposite colored bishops. And if you don't know, the opposite colored bishops is uh, his best bet in saving this position, even down to pawns. Okay, difficult, but possible. So, happy to see bishop f3. Because uh, he's helping us to find trades. And on rook f3, nah, he's not going to play rook f3. On rook f3, pause the video. Find the winning tactic. Because that would have uh, dropped uh, back rank mate. Rook Sivon. But yeah, knight f3 and uh, I could do infiltration move. Doubling up on the second rank. Targeting g2, yeah, tempo move. Probably expecting rook g1 because what else to do and... Uh, yeah, then we'll think for a little bit how to increase uh, the pressure. At some point uh, we have to push those uh, extra pawns. Gotta make use of them somehow. So, yeah, we'll have to think a little bit. Maybe on rook g1 I can just do something like bishop f6. The bishop kind of, uh, you know, dominating his knight. And I can bring my king to, like, uh, c6, I think was the plan. So there are no checks because the rook is there. And then d5. And we start, like, king c5, d4, king c4, d3, king c3, d2. And you get where I'm going with this. <laughs> Uh, hopefully. 91, yeah, just can offer rook trade. Keeping the momentum. Happy with uh, some trades, even though I'm not going to have so much pressure on G2 anymore. Uh, any trade is supposed to make this easier. Yeah, maybe he wants some checks. So I'm just going to play bishop f6, uh, overprotecting this stuff, giving my uh, king a square. Not that it was getting mated. I had h7, but it's kind of nicer to have it there, uh, closer to the pawns. 
And yeah, now that he's leaving the back rank open, we start to push him even more. So rook a1 and then rook d1. Yeah, he goes there. He's basically saying that on uh, rook d1, he wants rook e3. But what if rook e2? Hmm. No more defense. Knight is pinned. We do pp on the pp. Pressure the pinned pieces. And my opponent resigned. Now, if you guys haven't watched the first video of the dragon, you can uh, click on it here. And uh, because I'm not like other YouTubers, here's gonna be another video. So, most YouTubers uh, give you one video to click on. Here you have two.